Here are three answers I give to people each time they ask me, do you think that with the rise of AI, medical writers will be replaced? I want to give all these answers with a caveat that it's really, really important for you to be wary of anybody that comes on the internet or anywhere and makes declarative statements that this is going to replace this and that's the end of the story. There's so many nuances to things. So let's get into the answers. The first the sense I usually give people is that it's really important for us to look at what medical writers do. I think medical writing as a name for the profession is actually sometimes a misnomer because when you think about what medical writers do on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, writing, yes, is a good portion of our work, but there is so much that you do. There's project management, there's planning, there's collaborating with teams and collaborating with business units and understanding what their strategy is and understanding things that are even beyond what you do, right? Just understanding the broad, even just understanding the business and understanding where the business is moving and the strategy behind that. This is not something that is easily replaceable with AI. So when you really take into account what medical writers do, I will say that it's way more than writing. And so in that sense, AI is not going to take a medical writer's job. Reason number two, I was recently just on YouTube, you know, scrolling through and I saw that Jeff Sue talked about a course that he took on AI from Google. And I'm, I'm thinking of taking that course myself, right? To really understand what AI is, because a lot of us were introduced to AI, you know, because of chat GPT, but chat GPT is just one tool in the big C and the big body of knowledge that is artificial intelligence, right? And within that body of knowledge, you have things like machine learning and artificial intelligence and automation and all of these things are not the same thing. All right. So that's really, really important to understand. Now, specifically when we're talking about tools like chat GPT, which are generative AI tools, right? You can give chat GPT a prompt and it will give you an output. And so people have used this, for instance, with, a, with blog content, they take a piece of content, they go into chat, chat GPT or they give it some prompts and chat GPT will write them like a blog post or something or a social media post, which is wonderful and which is great. But here's the thing that these um, tools are trained on the inputs that you and I give it. Now, if you're working, especially for medical writers, I'm making a point here. If you are a medical writer working for a pharmaceutical company, a biotech company, a medical device company, it is likely that there is proprietary information within that company that that company does not want to train these AI, these publicly available AI tools on. And so you have to be really careful. I know that just looking at the news, I know that Apple came out with an AI policy for their employees. At my company, we have an AI policy for us as well. And I think a lot of companies are realizing that if they don't put these policies in place, you can have employees that really don't know, are, are ignorant about how these tools work and maybe feeding proprietary. And let me tell you something, proprietary information i'm saying that wrong proprietary information and intellectual property make people billions of dollars every single year nobody wants to just freely give their money to an ai tool that somebody could potentially somebody that really knows how to use these tools will potentially go and mine so because of that okay actually using some of these generative ai tools are not really encouraged within companies yes you can use them for, for things like research maybe brainstorming but when it comes to actually generating the content that includes that intellectual property that or that doesn't necessarily include it but you know discusses it it's really important to be careful and that's a question i'm actually putting out there that you actually really have to be careful of these um of using these uh, generative ai tools don't be afraid of them i use them for multiple purposes right it's a great tool but understanding how these tools work is also important and that's one of the reasons why AI is not necessarily going to replace a medical writer's job. There's a lot of intellectual property and proprietary information to protect. Number three, 
is one that even the companies that make these generative AI tools have warned us of, right? These tools are trained on data and information that is out there already. And so using generative AI to create a piece of content opens you up to a number of problems. Number one is plagiarism. You can easily be penalized for plagiarism by using a tool like ChatGPT. Now I know that there's so many tools out there to like pass, you know, the, the test that you didn't use ChatGPT or any other generative AI tool, but plagiarism is a big problem. There's also the problem of misinformation. There's a popular story of a lawyer that used chat GPT or some generative AI tool for his case. And it was riddled with mistakes and riddled with cases that were made up. These tools also hallucinate. They make things up, right? Because again, they're trained on the data that's already available. And so they may make things up out of the blue and, and actually put out information that is not factual. So there's plagiarism and then there's hallucination that these tools are known for and even the companies warn us of it and there are also biases right that are built in the, into these tools and so for all these reasons any medical writer worth their salt is not going to solely or completely depend on a generative ai tool to produce content yes it does help with again it does help with research it does help with brainstorming it does help with some ideas but to be honest at this point in time at best, generative AI tools are very, very helpful, but they're not replacing medical writers. And actually, it's so interesting. Um, yesterday, I saw a post that a very popular freelance writer, Jennifer Goforth Gregory, now I know she's not in medical writing specifically, but she had done a poll of freelance writers. And this is a big poll that takes into account all kinds of freelance writers, including, I'm sure, freelance medical writers. And a lot of them actually reported that even with the rise of these AI tools, they're on track to make the same or even more as freelance writers this year. Okay, so are AI tools going to replace medical writers? That's yet to be seen. But these are the answers that I typically give people when they ask me, aren't you afraid that AI is going to take your job? And to be honest, I'm not. If this is helpful, give it a thumbs up. And what do you think? Leave your, your thoughts and your comments below.